The earworm? It totally made me think of you. Why wouldn't it? I'll, I'll tell you about it later. I gotta do a thing. You know, when I'm trying to do a bit, and like I have to do a bit about a bit before I do the bit, Not too long ago, but a, a, a few years, a handful of years, a little bit more than that, I was with some academics who were talking about decolonial perspectives and decolonizing. One of the persons I spoke to is from the Indian subcontinent. She was doing studies in Canada. And I asked what this meant, and she said, no one knows yet. We're still trying to figure this out. It's kind of like the term global south. It's, it's fungible. We're, we're trying to figure out what this is. What is it to undo or to unravel rather than to build or create? What are you building as you undo something? What we haven't undone is the Spanish Inquisition. We have not yet had the Disquisition. And one of the things that we forget is that this whole idea of interreligious, intercultural, engagement around math and science and the arts and architecture and food and just humanity. We think this happened. I, I know people who think this. Occasionally, I will think this. I will think that this was a product of the late 20th, early 21st century in the U.S., maybe a little bit in like Paris or Berlin or London. But I do forget that the Mediterranean world, people knew each other. People who lived in a Phoenician coastal town somewhere in current day Lebanon or Israel knew people in North Africa, in current day Libya. Ancient times through, let me do it in the right direction, <laughs> from ancient times through the medieval period that we had intercultural exchange. Look at our languages. Look at, look at Scots languages and the Nordic languages. Listen to words in Swedish and words in Gaelic. We engaged each other. So maybe disquisition is about re-engaging and being more inquisitive and less about auto-defay. <laughs> <laughs>